we all try and do our bit to reduce, reuse, recycle. But we still want to give presents that are beautifully wrapped. However, using wrapping paper and sellotape, some of which can't be recycled anyway, isn't great for the environment. So this year, why not take inspiration from the Japanese art of furushiki? It's simply fabric, which is cut into a square, then folded and tied around your present, and it can be used again and again for years to come. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do on the virtual village hall this morning. I'm going to show you how to print your own fabric using what's called a gel plate and some leaves that are around this time of the year. And then I'm going to show you a very basic folding and tying technique that's really quick um, so you can, you can wrap your presents. So without further ado, I'm going to pop you down and you can see exactly what I'm doing. First off, you will need what's called a gel plate or a jelly plate. Uh, you can buy these, or if you don't have one, then have a look at the notes to this video. And there's a link where you can be taken to a tutorial to make your own. They're very easy to make, um, and they do contain gelatine, an animal product. Uh, the bought ones don't, but the made ones do. But you can also use a vegetarian alternative gelatine. So this is the gel plate. As I say, it's like you've put too much uh, gel gelatine in jelly. So it's nice and rubbery, yet firm. And this takes ink, um, paints, fabric paints really well and also makes great imprints. So this is what we're gonna use to make, um, to print onto our fabric. Um, I've also got a roller, sometimes also called a brayer. I've got my fabric paint which is just basic fabric paint. Nothing special, really special about that. Um, I've got my leaves. So go for anything that's around this time of the year. This leaf is from a cardoon, which I grow on my allotment. Um, beautiful, huge silvery leaves. Um, some of them are just coming, coming through. So I managed to pick one of those, fight my way through the snow this morning and pick one of those. Then you will also need your fabric. So go for um, a natural fabric that's probably the best for your fabric paints but you might just want to check on the instructions this is actually from an old sheet that's been cleaned and ironed and that's ready to use so again we are reusing items that we've already got so this is cotton but you can use linen um, if it's a really special pre present you could also use silk and then why not the silk could the silk cloth could then be made into a scarf as well. So a little bit of a double present for someone maybe. To start with, we need to put paint onto a gel, gel plate. So I'm going to go with some orange. So you just need a small amount of paint and using a roller just roll that to and fro to cover your plate a nice even covering there you go so I'm going to give the um, give our fabric a background color of the orange but I want to add a little bit of interest so I'm going to pop these leaves on top and I'm just going to because it's quite big I'm just going to separate these leaves so I can use them separately I take my fabric and lay it on top, just making sure that those leaves are pressed down. Check underneath so they're not rising up. And then just smooth over. making contact with the fabric, the gel plate, and those leaves. 
and then as you lift it you'll get the silhouette of these leaves and then maybe just one or two I might take off lay back down again so I get a little bit of interest on those leaves but I've still got some silhouettes from those leaves and I don't want to waste these two prints So just on another piece of my fabric, I'm just going to collect those prints like that and then over in the corner like that. Okay, so I've started adding the background, so I'm just going to carry on to cover these sections here. So again, a bit more paint <laughs> there we go I think I need to get some more orange fabric paint So if you're joining me live today, good morning. I hope you're really well. I hope you're staying warm. We're making, we're printing up some fabric this morning, and then we're going to be using it. I'm going to show you a Japanese technique called furushiki to um, wrap presents, and I'm just making up the fabric at the moment. I'm just randomly putting these leaves down, not after any actual pattern. And I want to just overlap here so that I don't get a line. So. Again, just smoothing down. making contact with the gel plate, the leaves, just check I've got into the corners, there we go, and I'm going to that one and that one, I'm going to place back down so I get that more detailed print. There you go, so that's how it's coming on. Don't want to waste those two prints. So I'm going to put one at the side where I've got a little bit of a white part still on my fabric. And a piece there. And I'm going to use all this bit as well to cover to fill in any gaps that I've left. So along here and you don't have to print your own fabric for this for this technique or using the furishki technique you can simply use fabric that you've already got in your own stash so it's a great way to use up any fabric from your craft box that might not be enough to make anything that might be just enough to wrap a present so the one that I'm using is 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters and um, they do really have to be square so a little bit like when we do origami uh, we always use square paper for that so make sure your fabric is square when you cut it and depending on the size of the present that you're wrapping go as big as you need to so I need to fill in these parts here so I reckon I've got two lots of inking up still to do so let's carry on hopefully my orange I, there we go that's better to put it upside down so <laughs> got a bit more bit more paint to use
So I'm just making sure that the leaves don't overlap because it's good to get these negative spaces. And I always do it with the leaves facing down so you get the veins make a really good imprint. Position it to place my fabric on. Give it to reveal, and I think I'm going to leave those because I quite like. I like how that's um, a silhouette there. Maybe just over here. Let's go back down and collect that. Collect that detail. There we are. So I've just got this bit to feel now. I'm going to start over in the corner. I want this one to have a bit of detail and that one too. Okay, so I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel a little bit this bit here and also here. So I'm gonna ink up once more. Actually I've got a bit there to use, haven't I? Take that, waste not, want not, and then a little bit over there in the top, you can grab that. And I haven't got any real kind of design or any sort of planning to this, um, I just want to make sure it's all filled, that's my only, my only plan really. So last ink up. And note to self to put orange paint on the list. So you see, I've only got a small piece to print now, so I've only just inked up just enough on the gel plate. And let's have a look at that. Yep, I'm happy with that. Just might just fill in tiny bit there um, and I wouldn't actually mind just a little bit in this corner maybe some of the, the detail there we go that's good and just briefly here it's knowing when to stop sometimes isn't it <laughs> and then one last one in this corner and then I think we are done Oh, I didn't actually take any. There, that's looking better. Oh, so I've got a mix of the silhouettes and also these beautiful detailed leaves as well. So now I'm just going to add um, a final print, uh, just one beautiful leaf here and just in a darker contrasting colour. So I just need to make sure my gel plate is clean. I'm just using a sponge and water, the water-based paints. Always use water-based paints on your gel plate. Don't, don't use them oils as it will damage it. So clear that off. I 
an old art tea towel. And then I think I'm going to use this really nice a sort of moss green. So I'm keeping mine quite natural. Okay. I'm using a clean roller. And then I've got the main part of the leaf. I'm just going to lay down very gently. And I'm going to use a spare piece of fabric to take off all the green that's around. And then this can be the basis for another Frushki cloth. But what I'm doing at the moment, I'm taking off the paint that's around the leaf because I don't want that onto my final design. Let's try and take a little bit more off. Okay. Which is beautiful in itself, um, but I'll save that now. I'll add to that later. And then take off the leaf so that the imprint is left here and then I'm going to put that in the middle of my fabric. So I'm going to put it at a slight angle so about there and then just rub over the leaf. I'm just going to check underneath to see how it's going. That's good. And have a quick look too. to the corners, check that all those veins are showing through. One last rub, just belt and braces, and then there we go. So we've got this, this orange background and then this beautiful detailed leaf in the darker colour going through the middle. So check with the manufacturer's instructions on your fabric paint um, because there's a good chance that you'll need to leave it to dry and then you'll need to heat set it with an iron. Um, but it's very dry already because you don't use an awful lot of paint so that's good on the purse as well. And now I'm just going to show you how to fold it and wrap your present. So move that to one side. Wrapping presents with cloth is great as well because, or fabric, because it doesn't really matter what the shape of the, the present is. It's, you know what it's like, you're, you're kind of cutting and folding and sellotaping and sometimes the it can look a little bit odd. Um, but this is great because you're just, the fabric just folds around any odd bits, sort of any odd uh, shapes of your present. So you get a really, it looks really nice too. So this is the basic fold. So lay your fabric so that it is uh, kind of like in a, a diagonal, so it's not square on. Place your present in the middle. Wrap one corner over. Make sure it sits nice and tightly. Bring the other one over and then just under then we're going to make these bits into a point and bring over and then the other one 
fold it so that that goes into a point bring it over and then tie your present and if you like you can add something like some dried flowers or maybe some herbs something like that a sprig of something add it to the present then one last tie I'm going to neaten those And there you have your hand printed fabric folded in a Japanese inspired furushiki way. So I hope that's inspired you to have a look in your craft boxes, see what fabric that you have that you can use for wrapping presents. And this works any time of the year. That's what's so great about it. And I'm really on a revolution to get rid of wrapping paper and start using this technique because imagine you just go to sort of a box that you've put aside with lots of frisky fabric in it, um, ones that have been sent to you, one that you can then resend to other people and we can use them again and again and again and they really do last for years to come and they're beautiful as well because a lot of thoughts gone into the printing of them. So this is my last session on the virtual village hall for the year. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching, for joining me in all my printmaking and gardening adventures this year. And I also want to say a special thank you to um, all the staff from the virtual village hall. A lot goes into putting these, this page together and setting up these videos. So a massive thank you to you as well. So however you spend the next few weeks, stay safe take care of one another and make amazing memories and I will see you next year. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye.